Hey, welcome back in. This is the Steve Gill Show. Visiting with uh, Tennessee Senator Bob Corker, longtime friend and uh, one of the guys who is a, a lot of times under fire for simply talking to the other side, yeah. even though your voting record, when it gets down to the voting record, you're one of the most conservative senators in the uh, in the U.S. Senate. Uh, apparently, you know, folks upset not by what you do, but by the fact you talk before you do yeah. uh, with the other side. Yeah. Uh, one of the issues that, that people are just going apoplectic about and, and which... Uh, we've talked about on this show gets right. gets under my skin. They've they've accused uh, anybody who voted for the National Defense Authorization Act of being traitors. Uh, and my good friend Alan West was among those who's voted for the Defense Authorization Act and actually read the section about Americans being dragged off the streets of Smyrna, Tennessee, thrown into Guantanamo Bay. It's not in there, and yet you get I, these crazy conspiracy, you know, nine eleven truth or. Stuffers yeah. that are out there saying that you guys just voted to arrest Americans on the streets of America just uh, you know for being suspect because they listen to talk radio or something. You know, I've been in. Uh, uh, I was mayor of the city of Chattanooga for a while, and then certainly in this job, I've never had an unlisted phone number, uh, never. And, and that number know, is uh, yeah. <laughs> well, well. The, uh, upon passage of, of the national defense, uh, you know, uh, this bill, uh, all of a sudden, I needed a, a, a you know a, an unlisted number. I mean, it, you're right. I mean, it just tore people up. I was getting calls from Oregon and Idaho and all kinds of places. And if you ask, have you yeah. read the bill? Yeah. Well, no, but I've heard. Yeah, yeah. There's a very explicit language that nothing in this bill, nothing changes the constitutional rights of, of American citizens. And and so, you know... And the it, authorization is extended to the military that's right. to arrest those who are engaged in terrorist activities, the military, which yeah. doesn't operate here in the United States, going in and arresting people who live in some apartment in Smyrna, Tennessee. Yeah, so it, it's, uh, you know, I think what's happened, though, at least from our experience in our, in our office, I think if people have actually read the legislation that has calmed down tremendously so so uh, but for a, no no doubt for a few days it was pretty ferocious what are the other hot topics i mean obviously as as we get ready to raise the debt limit again you have been frustrated you have been working to try and get us to deal with the issues yeah. but when the credit card's out either you fire everybody shut down the government yeah. uh, or you try to find a way to extend time so you can work out the long-term solutions of tax reform and everything else that you've talked about yeah. and yet people are going to be all exercised again when we raise the debt limit it again with a president who won't deal with the underlying issues because he's too busy out there going to Hawaii and campaign. Yeah, it's it's a confusing topic. I mean, here, here's what I, I say to, to folks on my side of the aisle. I mean, if you vote for spending, you're going to also have to vote to raise the debt ceiling. I mean, the fact is, if you look at Paul Ryan's budget, you would have had to raise the debt ceiling numbers of times before you got things back in balance. But back to the issue you were talking about earlier about working with the other side. I mean, my great public school education here in Tennessee taught me how to count. And I think these issues are incredibly important to our country. And I'm talking about reducing deficits. We have to deal with entitlement reform. I mean... The average, the average person in America working, the average citizen, makes $43,500. So in a two-wage earner family, that's $87,000 over their lifetime. They would pay into Medicare, including the part that the employer pays on their behalf. They would pay into Medicare $119,000. That same family over their lifetime, again in today's dollars, will take out of the Medicare program $357,000. We've got 20 million more, more of us. Steve, you and I are the same age, roughly. You're a year or two behind me at UT. Great basketball player. People forget that. <laughs> but but, Not but our, we, have, we, have 20, we have 20 million more Americans that are coming on the rolls over the next decade with that formula that I just laid out, 119 going in and 357 coming out, widening. We have got to deal with the entitlement issues. They are, the, they are crowding out every other type of spending. By the way, necessary spending on defense, on infrastructure, on the kinds of things that actually make our country great. So the way you do, do that, you've got to find a few folks on the other side of the aisle that are willing to take that on. Are uh, there any over there? You know, 
I mean, they're not I, coming I, up and popping up. Publicly you know, I mean, let's, let's face it. I mean, you know, uh, you know, you begin to talk about entitlement reform, and all of a sudden, uh, things get pretty difficult. And by the way, all of us want to see Medicare continue. I don't know of anybody that wants to see it over. But the numbers but don't add up. The numbers are. We're going to hit the wall. I mean, and then we're going to talk gonna, about it. You and use the term Ponzi scheme. The rhetoric gets gets the attention rather than the fact that the numbers don't add up. Whether you call it a Ponzi scheme or that the numbers don't add up. It doesn't work. No, the, the Medicare program is the most difficult to deal with. And and I might add, uh, the one that, that actually affects people in, in so many ways. I mean, it, it not only affects the Medicare population, but the payments that we make in the Medicare program actually determine what happens in the private sector because they're so tied together. So it is a huge issue. I do think that there's a growing – I think we could actually pass – uh, something that was large and actually solved our problem is th- if there was pain on all sides. And again, I mentioned, uh, you know, in April, I think there's going to be a little bit of pressure to do that. In December, there's going to be tremendous pressure to do that. And so, Steve, every single day, literally every single day, our staff is working on, you know, developing something that that hopefully. Uh, you know, we can get enough. And there may be a narrow window of opportunity to do something. There may be a narrow window. I think I think the best opportunity, unfortunately, is probably going to be in December, unless it just ends up a lame duck session. A lame duck. And and and, and unless it's just this election, this election will no doubt become a referendum on this issue. Right. And it could be that maybe it's next spring uh, after the election takes place. We thought the last election was a referendum and we heard a lot of talk. And then the the one one thing I do think voters on both sides of the aisle have got to demand of the people who are our nominees. Okay, on our side of the aisle, we'll, ult- we'll ultimately in the next month or no- two know who that is. Have you endorsed We're, anybody? Do you plan? To I, I haven't. I, I, you know, I just I think you know people here in Tennessee uh, want to make their own decision. I'm, I, you know, not that you know I would affect anybody's thinking in that way anyway. I have a sense of who's going to be the nominee. Did you ever think yeah. you'd see a major Republican candidate attacking the free market system the way we've seen Newt Gingrich? Uh, I, you know, I look. And I'm I, not asking for an endorsement. It's just it, he's been attacked now by everybody. You've, you've had Club for Growth declare what he said disgusting. What we don't need to do on our side of the aisle is begin to break down the very things that uh, that we believe in in order to win a race. That's uh, I mean, that's, can it, that's kind of what the other side of the aisle uh, certainly has been doing, trying to divide. And I just don't, you know, look, I'm, I'm a free market guy. I'm actually... Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing the rest of the day. <laughs> I'm a very free market guy, and I don't want us to do anything to try to to this. That's what made our country great. That's why our standard of living is what it is. That's why other countries try to to emulate what we've done in this country. And the last thing we need to do is talk about it as if it's something that uh, that's is what the Occupy Wall about. Street crowd is doing. They've they've got that handled. They don't need any help on the Republican side. Bob Corker, good to visit with you again, my friend. Thank you Thank for you. what you're doing. Thank you. Uh, and uh, you're going to have an election year cranking up this year as well. We'll talk more about that in the weeks and months ahead and keep up the good work. 